Jumping off the edge of the map in the finals is highly recommended and it could even win you games. Yeah, you probably never would have thought you'd be hearing that. Well, here's the thing. There are some secret spots where you can kind of rat until a more suitable situation. For example, if you need to res your teammates or ninjas steal a cash out. It turns out, yes, there are some little spots that you can learn. There could be a great hiding space and I managed to find this spot which later helped me to stay alive long enough to go and steal the cash out. Tip number two, how to deal with annoying stun guns. And this tip even works on the best players in the world. This is the number one light player, 64 in the leaderboards, alongside one of his teammates who's 72 in the leaderboards. You'll notice I got stunned and got shocked by this player who was in cloak. But we still manage to take them down simply because we understand how the stun gun works. All it does is slow you, stop you from using your abilities, and most importantly, force you into hip fire. The best counter to stun guns is simply to have a hip fire strong weapon, the M11 or either of the shotguns on heavy and medium. Now you may not want to main these weapons, so simply have those weapons on reserves in case you come into a tournament against a bunch of light players. Speaking of reserves, did you know that you can have multiple weapons on your reserve slot? So if you're very sure about the utility you're going to use in a game, for example your gadgets, then you can have a bunch of other weapons in case you have different encounter situations where, you know, for example, you got a bunch of shotgun heavies against you, then you may want to take like a sniper, for example, to counter them. The most powerful weapon in the finals are plant pots. I'm not even joking. If you play heavy, Double stack C4 on any object, for example a plant pot, throw it at an enemy, detonate the C4 remotely and you'll insta kill anyone in its radius. Even heavies, it does 400 plus damage, it's ridiculously overpowered and will win you games. One man's trash is another man's explosives. It's stupid! If you've got an AFK teammate that refuses to play or is just trolling, for example, every time you try to respawn them, they just jump into a ditch and get themselves killed again. Instead of reviving them, just use their statue as a permanent C4 destruction tool. Throw your C4 on the statue and throw it into enemies and destroy them. And unlike other objects in this game, the statue won't be destroyed, so you can just go and collect it and use it again. If your teammates aren't going to help you themselves, then you can force them to help you. If you're in a situation where you can't get your teammates to respawn them, and you're playing tournament mode so you have limited respawn tokens, just look at their statues and shake your head. Your teammates will get the idea and they'll respawn with their tokens. A nice little tip to communicate when you don't have text chat or voice chat available. If the time is running down, you need to steal a cash out, but both of your teammates are dead. Instead of trying to rush in there to res them, if your team have tokens, just sit there near the cash out and wait. Wait for them to respawn and they're going to spawn next to you, giving you all a chance to push together to take that cash out. Now, if you're playing quick cash, it doesn't matter, right? But in ranked mode, you have limited respawns, but a lot of people just don't use them because they're scared they'll run out. But in a situation like this, you absolutely want to use them, or at least get your teammates to use them. And just like before, just shake your screen to say no, and your teammates will get the idea that they need to respawn. If you're using the cloak ability, you're not entirely invisible. If you're running, you'll be least invisible. If you're walking, you'll be slightly visible, but almost entirely invisible. And if you stand completely still, you will be completely invisible. This is a neat trick with the grapple. If you grapple at the ground right in front of you, just behind the enemy you're attacking, you'll grapple straight behind them at speed, but then you can chain two bunny hops at full momentum and completely bamboozle them. If you want to get away from a heavy, remember these little vents, because only lights and mediums can fit through here. To help set up better defenses, you can double melee zip lines to completely destroy them. Some people don't know this, but if you have the tripwires and turrets modifier for Las Vegas, there's literally a button you can press that turns it on and off. Off. So if you're defending a cash point and you need to quickly run in there, make sure you turn it off first. Otherwise, you're going to get barraded with bullets from an undestroyable turret. You can actually put two cash boxes into a single cash out, and this can be useful in some situations. For example, you're in overtime and there's still a bit more time before the other cash out disappears. Then if you pop it into your own cash out, then that means you don't have to worry about someone else starting another cash out. If you're first place in a tournament, 
then putting all of the money in a single cash out will ensure that even if someone steals it, then you're still going to be second place because only one team will get money instead of two, essentially meaning you'll only go down one spot and will still qualify. This isn't the only case where double cash outs can be really useful. Getting double cash out early on in the game can basically set you up to win super early on. However, if you put two cash out boxes inside of a single cash out, every other player on every other team is going to know about it and they're all going to put all of their attention on your single spot, meaning it's going to be really hard to defend. So if you're in a lucky situation where you have two cash boxes, instead you should defend your vault and hide one of the cash boxes carefully. You're going to need to hold on to it because that way enemy players won't be able to see the cash box on their screen unless they have line of sight of you. If you don't hold on to it, then they'll be able to see it through walls. So all you need to do now is wait until your cash out is almost complete and then quickly throw the cash out box into your cash out and you've guaranteed yourself double money without having to deal with the extra stress of other players trying to attack you. In fact, while some teams will try to attack your cash out, a lot of the teams will be running around the map trying to figure out where the other cash out box is and they won't be able to find it. Okay, now here's a scenario that could help you qualify in tournament games. Let's say you are second place and a final cash out has just started. However, the team that started the cash out is in first place. Now, in this case, you may feel the pressure to go and try and capture that cash out box so that you don't lose. However, this may not be the right play. As long as the first place stays in first place and you stay in second place, both of you are going to qualify. So instead of trying to attack the cash out point and try to steal it, which can be really tricky when all four teams are in the same area, try and defend it try and help first place by attacking the other two teams who are going to be feeling the pressure a lot more than you try to eliminate those players on team three and four and try to deal as much damage to them whilst not really putting any pressure on the box itself because then basically the odds are in your favor you have two teams defending the cash out versus two teams attacking as opposed to three teams just going at it with one team defending because if that one team who is defending loses against any of those three teams, you're probably not going to qualify unless you're somehow the lucky team that manages to steal the cash out. So in simple terms, if first place is cashing out the final cash out box, defend it with them to stop third and fourth place from cashing out and stealing your place so that you can still qualify. Now, here's another tip that's going to help a lot of players out there who struggle to distinguish team colors. I've noticed, especially when you play tournament mode, you have a lot of colored teams that just look really similar. You have like orange and then slightly brownie orange and then pink and then slightly darker pink. And it becomes really difficult, but you can use the colorblind options in the menu to change the team colors in game. Now, you may need to find that after each round, you need to adjust the colorblind setting to something different because it's going to allow you to distinguish the outlines of each enemy in the game better so that you quickly know whether or not you're dealing with a multi-team situation or a single team situation. I often change my colorblind settings midway through tournaments just so I always know what team I'm actually facing against. 